Have we talked enough about casting yet? Probably, but we're going to talk about it some more because we've done some videos about casting in the past, why uh, it's okay to use casting and how to avoid using casting, using things like interfaces and being able to use things like interfaces to communicate between different objects uh, more efficiently and more scalably is a good thing, but the general advice of don't cast ever is a little bit overblown, and I've discussed that in another video. But today I want to highlight a different angle, and that is how to set things up to make casting as cheap as possible so that you can use it in a little bit of a wider case of scenarios. Because you might have heard that casting to C++ classes, if we go into a uh, blueprint here, like my pickup blueprint, this is just an example project that I have, doing things like uh, getting this actor begin overlap, we're casting to the third person character, which in another video I explained why that's fine, because this is always loaded in memory, because it's our player character. But you've maybe heard that doing something like uh, cast to character, the base character class, is fine because this is a C++ class and why would that suddenly make it fine? Well the base issue with casting comes in with hard references and specifically hard references to assets. That is the thing in the end that we want to avoid because assets are big, they take up a lot of memory and loading those into memory if we're not actually using them is wasteful. C++ classes tend to be 100% just code. It is when we get into making blueprint classes that we go into the third person character, for instance, that we start assigning things like meshes, which have materials and textures and animations and all that kind of stuff. And now we're suddenly referencing these assets. But we can replicate that exact same ID fully within blueprint if we make blueprint based classes that don't have any asset references at all. So if I make something like a new blueprint, uh, let's make this an actor and call it something like a BP base weapon or something along those lines, do whatever you like, uh, we can very much just set this up to add a component. We can add a static mesh uh, component to this and don't fill out the static mesh. We can make child classes of this that do populate the static mesh, and those child classes will then, of course, have those hard references, but we can now use casting to this BP base weapon, which loads in this blueprint class into memory through hard referencing. But since this blueprint class doesn't actually reference any other assets, it's actually pretty cheap to load this into memory, and it doesn't cost that much. Of course, it still is marginally more than a C++ class would be, so if you are comfortable using C++, you make this kind of base class in C++ and not in Blueprint. But if you're not quite like into C++, you can replicate the same structure in purely just Blueprint. And then maybe we also have uh, something like a collision box, which again, we're not going to do anything with. Uh, but in all the child classes, we can position this around uh, the static mesh in any way we need to do. So now we can uh, do our programming. So begin overlap, uh, we like, apply damage or whatever. You can do whatever you want uh, with this. And we can make functions and events on this. So we can make a, a custom event for things like a weapon fire, if it's a ranged weapon, instead of using a collision box for things like a melee weapon. You'd probably split this out into a couple of separate base classes as well, making a general weapon class and then making a ranged weapon and a um, melee weapon class or whatever. But for the example, we're just going to throw all of this into the uh, singular base weapon. So there we can do things like maybe do a, a line trace by channel. Uh, we start at this get actor location at the get actor forward vector multiplied by a certain distance and so on and so forth this is not a tutorial about making like a gun so i'll just go over this super super quickly let's say that its range is actually let's say that its range is a variable so we can promote this to a variable and this can be the shooting range or shotting range uh, let's set that on the category combat and then the end position of the line trace will be get actor location plus the result of that uh, we can set the default value uh, after we compile this to something like a thousand 
And then we get the out hit, uh, we get the hit actor, and we apply damage to it as well. And uh, now that we're talking about variables, we can just make this uh, damage uh, also a variable. So this will be the base damage that we can also uh, then reuse for this. And you can do a bunch of stuff. But now we have this uh, weapon fire event, which, which we can call from something like the player if we cast to this base class. So if we go into the third person character and we say, hey, we have uh, maybe a uh, child actor component, which they're a little bit weird child actor components, but let's pretend like they're not. Uh, we parent that to the mesh and we say the parent sockets can be like one of the hands, for instance. So it's a little weirdly placed. And when we press the uh, debug key for F, what we do is we get the child actor, uh, we get the actor, from that it's kind of weird child actor component you need to get the actual actor uh, reference out of that and then we can cast that to our bp base weapon and this doesn't load in any assets and i'll show you that in a moment uh, so when we press it we will uh, fire weapon now this weapon can actually be any child class of our base weapon and this will just work because that is how inheritance like functions within programming so let's make a couple of these uh, children. So we can create a child blueprint class and let's call this BP gun one. And here we can start giving these static meshes. I don't have a gun static mesh uh, at the moment, uh, but this can be a sphere. And then uh, we can create another child blueprint class and this can be BP gun two. And that can have a static mesh that is not a sphere, <laughs> uh, a stick, I don't know. And these classes will have the references to these meshes and these materials, and those will load into memory and all that kind of good stuff. But if we are purely casting to just the base weapon, the base weapon doesn't have those references. So it's not going to load everything into memory uh, related to every weapon ever. If we now go back and we save everything just to be sure, and I go into the reference viewer uh, for this thing, we can see it has references to the base weapon, obviously, because it inherits from it, but also to this stick, which has a material uh, dedicated to it. So if we cast to BP Gun 2, these two things are also going to be loaded into memory, which we don't want to do. But simply casting to the base weapon itself doesn't actually do anything. You can see them here on the left side. These are things that reference the base weapon. But the hard referencing, loading things into memory, the only thing that you have to care about is the things that are to the right of the uh, main class that you're looking at here in the reference viewer. So if you structure your classes properly, uh, you can actually cast with very little to no cost. We can see that just this uh, base weapon class, if we look at the size map of it, is just about 80 kilobytes. And that's on disk. Uh, in memory, it's only 21 kilobytes, which... Again, still is significantly more than it would be in C++, but it is a negligible amount. So to see that this class is just 1096 bytes, so that is about one kilobyte. So it is significantly smaller in C++ compared to doing it in Blueprint, where we were at about 20 to 21 kilobytes. But this is per class, not per object. So even if you make a thousand blueprint classes at 20 kilobytes you're using 20 megabytes of memory to load in those classes which is not noticeable at all you would only be using one megabyte for the classes in c++ but again it's not 1995 anymore we have enough memory to have a couple of megabytes to work with uh, if we need to of course, it still is important to get familiar with using things like interfaces uh, for a more scalable workflow in a lot of cases. You shouldn't only ever be using casting, but using casting is fine in the right situations. And especially if you set up your hierarchy of classes properly in your project, the cost of casting actually isn't that bad. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member.
And of course, an extra massive thank you to my cave digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 